G'day, thanks for clicking the link. In a moment, you're about to see a shorter news segment from a longer news show that I put out on Monday. If you want to see more content like this, particularly from an Australian perspective, consider subscribing, turn on notifications. Otherwise, enjoy. Sticking with carbon emissions, climate change and technology that supports clean green ways to decarbonize the world, I want to talk about Toyota's comments about not electrifying, not electrifying their fleet. Detailed on car advice, Sean Hanley, the sales and marketing director for Toyota Australia, said that despite this week's focus on pure electric cars, I'm going to get to that folks. We cannot achieve carbon neutrality simply by turning all our cars into pure electric vehicles. One quarter of the world's CO2 emissions today come from electricity generation. Even by 2040, more than half of the world's electricity is expected to be generated by fossil fuels. Therefore, if all cars were to become pure electric vehicles, the demand for electricity would increase and carbon neutrality could be a long way off. These comments are nothing new and we have heard Toyota Japan say something similar before. Just maybe rewind back to this point in the episode where I detailed how most countries of the world have got plans to significantly reduce their impact on the environment by decarbonizing everything in which they do and how they're converting their power industries to renewable power. Before I go into a little bit of myth busting, shall we say, Sean, please know that even in Australia, with our mix of fossil fuels, driving an electric vehicle fueled by it results in 40% less emissions compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Why? Because you don't have to mine the oil, pump the oil, ship the oil, refine the oil, transport petrol, push it into cars. Getting a car to move involves a great deal of energy and by going electric you remove a massive section of that supply chain and in turn remove a lot of emissions. So once again you've got someone in a position of power who will influence what type of EVs we get in Australia by spruiking garbage that people will gobble up. We need to remember that this FUD around electric vehicles and how that if everyone in my street plugged their EVs in at once, we will have blackouts. It's complete and utter garbage. In fact, industry supports everyone getting electric vehicles because it will help stabilize the grid. So Sean, let me debunk you for a sec. The International Energy Agency estimates that global electricity from renewables will grow from 25% in 2019 to more than 50% by 2030. A UK study found that if all cars in the United Kingdom were electric, carbon emissions will reduce by 12%. I think what is going on here is that Sean is just towing the line for Toyota company as a whole and supporting them and keeping their internal combustion engine business going for as long as they possibly can. In doing so, they will keep the complexity up of those cars, means that service costs are high for owners, running costs are high for owners, profits are up for the business, you get the idea. It's just a very bad business model and I fear that Toyota is going to be left behind and whilst the rest of the world introduces internal combustion engine bans and uh, ask of car makers to ship to them cleaner and greener vehicles, well, Let's face it, in Australia, we could still be getting garbage vehicles here because we are the Cuba when it comes to you know getting the type of cars here, sulfur contents up, we have no emission standards, we have no petrol standards, we have no targets for our climate. Yet, uh, we have Toyota here who's basically just, oh, no, I, I, I need to stop. Oh, and by the way, Toyota unveiled a concept EV, which it says will be one of seven electric vehicles it will produce by the year 2025 for China. Let's talk about Charging Australia. And today, I'm excited to share with you that Tesla Australia will be adding 23 new locations over the next 12 months. 23. Look for the gray supercharger icons on this map. You might see one opening near you, but with one important note, 
Tesla isn't always the fastest at rolling out superchargers in Australia. Just ask Nigel and Western Australian viewers. They've only got one. They've got one. Mm, it's a sore point. Don't bring it up with him. He'll, he'll, he'll get a rant. <laughs> Hi, Nigel. The great thing about this rollout is that it's pushing away from the coastline, which is on the, like on the eastern seaboard, it's pretty well covered. Additionally, you can see down here in the south east of the state of Victoria, it's going to enable a new route between Melbourne and Sydney. And sticking with the subject of superchargers, the Driven has revealed that V3, that's version 3 of the Tesla supercharger, is coming soon to Australia. These one megawatt units are capable of charging a Tesla at 250 kilowatts or 250 kilometers of additional range in about 10 minutes. And the exciting point here that I think almost all electric vehicle owners can appreciate is that no more sharing of power. You are one plug, you no longer have the A and B issue whatsoever. Each plug gets its own massive amount of power. It's pretty damn impressive and I'm walking it, welcoming it to Australia and it'd be great to see it near you. Alrighty, well that brings us to the end of another episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know what you can do. Subscribe, that really would be appreciated. Leave me a little comment. Think about putting those notifications on so that when I do put on something new, you can see it. Uh, think about joining us over here on Patreon and otherwise, please, you be good and you be great.